Well, today we conclude the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter 50 today. Father, sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. And it says, Joseph fell upon his father's face and wept upon him and kissed him. And of course, last time in chapter 49, Jacob or Israel as God changed his name to uh, Israel, he died. So he's dead, but he is happy. What an upgrade, you know. He's no longer blind. He's no longer walking with a limp. He is out of his 147-year-old body. So he's doing just fine. Joseph, on the other hand, never felt worse. And he already misses his father. It's okay to feel sad when a loved one dies. It's okay to feel sad because you miss them. But never pity them if they have died in Christ. Because you should have it as good as they do. Verse 2. And Joseph commanded his servants, the physicians, to embalm his father. And the physicians embalmed Israel. You know, back then, in that culture, when a physician lost a patient, they would embalm them. It was seen as another way to prolong the existence of the body. And so what they would do back in Egypt in those days, they would remove all of the person's insides, except the heart, and then they would pack the body with salt and spices and chemicals. And then they would sew it back up and wrap it. And that would preserve it. Three. And 40 days were fulfilled for him. For so are fulfilled the days of those which are embalmed. And the Egyptians mourned for him three score and ten days. The Egyptians embalmed for religious reasons. They believed that when the soul, they believed that the soul would one day return to the body and they wanted it to be intact when it arrived. And Jacob, of course, was not embalmed for that reason. Jacob was, in, Jacob was embalmed because he would be carried back to the Holy Land for burial, which was like 250 miles away. You better embalm him. 40. And when the days, I should say four, when the days of his mourning were past, Joseph spoke to the house of Pharaoh, saying, If now I have found grace in your eyes, speak, I pray you, in the ears of Pharaoh, saying. And so Joseph sends a message to the king of Egypt. He's probably still sad about his father's death, which may be why he didn't appear before the king himself. In those days, people did not appear before kings if they were sad. Kings did not want any sadness in their presence. Five. But this is the message. My father made me swear, saying, Lo, I die. In my grave, which I have dug for me in the land of Canaan, there shall you bury me. Now, therefore, let me go up, I pray you, and bury my father, and I will come again. And Pharaoh said, Go up, and bury your father, according as he has made you swear. Joseph had promised his father that he would bury him back home. And Pharaoh knew that Joseph was a man of his word. So he told him to take some time off, return home, and bury his father. 7. And Joseph went up to bury his father, and with him went up all the servants of Pharaoh, the elders of his house, and all the elders of the land of Egypt, and all the house of Joseph, and his brethren, and his father's house. Only their little ones, and their flocks, and their herds, they left in the land of Goshen. And there went up with him both chariots and horsemen, and it was a very great company. 
And so Jacob receives a first-class tribute from Egypt. It was unheard of for Egypt to give such an elaborate state-sponsored funeral to a shepherd. But they did it for Jacob, no doubt because of his connection to Joseph. 10. And they came to the threshing floor of Atad, which is beyond Jordan. And there they mourned a great and very sore lamentation. And he made a mourning for his father seven days. And when the inhabitants of the land, the Canaanites, saw the mourning in the floor of Atad, they said, This is a grievous mourning to the Egyptians. Wherefore the name of it was called Abel Mizram, which is beyond Jordan. Compared to the sophisticated Egyptians, the Canaanites were barbaric. So they never saw a funeral like this with all this pomp and ceremony. They were so impressed that they remained in the area to, I should say, renamed the area to commemorate the event. And this was, they remained there too. They, you know, stayed there and watched this thing. They were just amazed at what was going on. 12. And his sons did to him according as he commanded them. For his sons carried him into the land of Canaan and buried him in the cave of the field of Machpelah, which Abraham bought with the field for a possession of a burying place of Ephron the Hittite before Mamre. And God points out the obedience of Jacob's sons here. You know, I guess they could have said it's a long trip back home since we know we're going to return there to live someday. Let's just save our father's bones and bury him when we return. They could have done that. And, of course, their father never would have found out, but they didn't do that because they knew it wasn't their father's will. There are a lot of good reasons for sons and daughters to honor their parents, but none better than the one that God gives us in Ephesians 6. Because it's right. Jacob's sons do it because it's right. Verse 14. And Joseph returned to Egypt, he and his brethren, and all that went up with him to bury his father after he had buried his father. God's time for Israel's return to the promised land had not yet arrived. So Joseph and his family returned to Egypt. 15. And when Joseph's brethren saw that their father was dead, they said, Joseph will perhaps hate us and will certainly repay us all the evil which we did to him. You know, it has been 40 years since the brothers sold Joseph into slavery. And they're still feeling guilt over it. God has forgiven them. Joseph has forgiven them, but they can't shake it. They're sure having a difficult time forgetting the bad thing that they did. That's not unusual, is it? God forgives and forgets the moment we confess, but often the footprints of our sins remain. And those footprints include guilt. 16. And it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be there. Because God doesn't want it to be there. Verse 16. And they sent a messenger to Joseph saying, Your father did command before he died saying, So shall you say to Joseph, Forgive, I pray you now, the trespass of your brethren and their sin. For they did to you evil. So stop there for a second. The brothers say, Joseph, before our father died, he told us to tell you that you're supposed to forgive us and not get us back. And you know what I think? I think they made this up. I think they made this up because they're afraid. For one thing, Joseph had already forgiven them. So their dad would never have said that to Joseph. And for another, if he had not, his dad would have told him to his face that he needed to do it. I think the brother's guilt has made them paranoid. That's what I think. 
in the last part of verse 17. For they did to you evil, and now we pray you forgive the trespass of your servants, of the servants of the God of your father. And Joseph wept when they spoke to him. And his brethren also went and fell down before his face, and they said, Behold, we be your servants. The brothers know that they sinned against Joseph and caused him a lot of suffering as a result. They know they've done wrong, and they know their sin must be punished. Someone, somehow, some way, it has to be punished. You see, God has created people to know, to understand when they have sinned. And he has also put into man the understanding that sin must be paid for. We've been born with a sense of justice because God is just and we've been created in his image. And what people need to understand today is that Jesus has been punished for our sins in our place. God's justice has been satisfied through the cross of Jesus Christ. God is as just today as he has always been. It's just that Christians don't have to worry about satisfying his justice. Jesus did it for them. 19. And Joseph said to them, Fear not, for am I in the place of God? Joseph says he's not going to get revenge on his brothers because he isn't God. And that's good because the Bible says, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. 20. But as for you, you thought evil against me, but God meant it to good, to bring to pass as it is this day to save many people alive. Their intentions were evil. There's no question about that. They sold their brother because they hated him. But instead of hating them back or plotting to get them back, Joseph focused on God's sovereignty and how he used their bad to bring about something good. You see, Joseph saw God in his troubles. And it's important for us to see God in our troubles. Don't become bitter. Don't get back. Look for God in your troubles. Look to see what he wants to accomplish spiritually in your life and probably in the life of many others. 21. Now therefore, for fear you not, I will nourish you and your little ones. And he comforted them. And spoke kindly to them. Joseph's not going to get revenge. He's not even going to put them on probation. He didn't say, I'm not going to punish you now, but you better watch your step. Because you're right on the edge. Joseph, like God, did not dwell on the sins they already repented of. And like God, Joseph did not repay their evil with evil. He didn't give them what their sins deserve. And that's what the Bible says. That's how God is toward us. He does, if we're Christians, he does not give us what our sins deserve. 22. And Joseph dwelt in Egypt, he and his father's house. And Joseph lived 110 years. And Joseph saw Ephraim's children to the third generation. The children also of Maker, the son of Manasseh, were born, brought up upon Joseph's knees. And it says in verse 24, And Joseph said to his brethren, I die, and God will surely visit you and bring you out of this land to the land which he swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. When Jacob was dying, he told Joseph that God would be with him. And now, as Joseph is dying, he tells his family that God will be with them. We need to comfort others with the same comfort that we have received from God. Share the blessing of God's word with others. Don't keep it to yourself. 25. And Joseph took an oath of the children of Israel, saying, God will surely visit you, and you shall carry up my bones from here. Joseph says, God's going to come to your aid someday. Now, of course, At that time, they didn't really need aid because everything was just fine. But things would soon change and really go from bad to worse until eventually Egypt would force the descendants of Jacob to become slaves. And that's why they would need God's help. And so Joseph was right. God did come to their aid 
when he delivered them out of slavery. And we're going to see that in the book of Exodus. And when he did deliver those people, they took the bones of Joseph with them to the promised land. 26. So Joseph died being 110 years old, and they embalmed him, and he was put in a coffin in Egypt. The first verse of the Bible, the first book verse of the book of Genesis, Genesis 1.1. 1, 1. First, first verse of this book says, In the beginning God created. And so the first verse of the book of Genesis spoke of God creating. The last verse of this book speaks of death. What happened? What happened was sin. The book of Genesis teaches that all the troubles of every kind, including death, can be traced back to sin in the world. God's original warning to man was not heeded. He warned, if you sin, you will die. Man sinned, and bad things have been happening ever since. Too bad it has to be that way. But you know what? The Bible says God is not mocked. Like the guy said, God is God, and you better believe it.